can let me start with a prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses. Yes, Father, we thank you and praise you for this opportunity, the decision that you have given to us, Lord Jesus, to align ourselves with your word, with to, with, to give priority to you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in our lives, especially through this Divine Will series. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Over to you, Jude. Uh, thank you, Brother Jose. Uh, wonderful introduction. Uh, and thank the Lord. And once again, my prayer to the Holy Spirit, Lord, guide me, speak through me, so that I bring the word Jesus spoke to Luis Epicureta to be brought exactly as he said without any change, without any addition or modification. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, wonderful introduction by Brother Jose. Yes, uh, I have decided to follow Jesus. That famous song hmm, came to my mind as he was ending. Hmm? So I think we should begin this Sunday evening session with that song. I have decided to follow, follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world we find. No turning back. Thank you, thank you, brothers and sisters. Wonderful, wonderful joining in. The, you know, just before he left for the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible says that Jesus and his apostles were singing hymns. Just imagine, he knew that he was going to be killed. And so very painfully killed but still he was singing and this song has the story behind i think most of you know that uh, the song where uh, it happened somewhere in assam in those early days in the 19th century or so when the christian missionaries had uh, gone to assam so there was one uh, family which had converted and uh, the elders of that village were against that they wanted him to give up his uh, faith in uh, jesus so they killed his wife. And still he said, no, I have decided to follow Jesus. That is what he went on singing. They killed his children. Still he went on singing. And when they were about to kill him, the, the something happened to the, the chief of that village. So he said, stop, stop, stop. So he's prepared to lose everything for the sake of Jesus. So let us stop. Let us stop here. And after that, the chief himself converted, became a Christian, and the whole village. So that is the sort of power which comes when you when you say that, and you mean that you are fully for Jesus. So that is the sort of you know story we have, uh, which we read in uh, the Book of Heaven. Louis of Picareta is so much so much attached to Jesus because she has seen the love of Jesus, and she loves him so much that she cannot be without him. And uh, Jesus is taking her through all the all the trials. She's made to face the demons. She's made to face all the problems. But still, she sticks on. She sticks on. And she comes out successful. But still, her pain is when Jesus is not seen. And Jesus keeps away from her when he has to chastise. So he tells her at one point in the third volume that uh, when, when Luisa Picaretta is very much upset, so why did you not come to me for so many days? So for a few days he had not come because he was hiding himself. He knew that. He tells her that if I come to you, I'll have to tell you about the chastisements which are going to come and uh, you will stop me. Okay. So Luisa says, why don't you give it to me? I am the victim soul. I am ready to take it now. Jesus said, no, this is something which is beyond your take. So I had to go and die. And I had to suffer. And Jesus tells that every time, every time there is chastisement, he 
also suffers with us, right? So that is something we need to understand. Because very often, as I said yesterday, some, some people lose faith. I was telling you about that uh, young girl uh, who lost her father and uh, she had stopped going to she, she started uh, st she stopped going to church and she said, and her father was a, a daily master and uh, she said no god is taking her don't, don't don't talk to me uncle about about Jesus. No, i was shocked so i tried to counsel her then she, i don't know what has happened after that i stopped because i thought i didn't have that sort of of uh, uh, you know, faith and uh, uh, the, the training to counsel such a person. So I just kept, kept praying. So very often what happens is when we face difficulties, we tend to move away and say, oh, why is this happening to me? What have I done wrong? Why did it happen to me? So when we start questioning and we start thinking in that line, we move away from it. Then we cause it more harm. Instead of that, we can convert it into divine currency. As Jesus says that, every time you have a big problem, come to me, come to me, kneel down with me in Gethsemane, pray with me. You see, just imagine the sort of pain he was going through in Gethsemane. He knew what, what sort of pain he will be facing. And as God, he knew it. And as a man, it was difficult for him. That is why he said, Father, please take this cup away from me. Yet, not my will, but your will. So that is that is the the basis, the foundation of this uh, uh, teaching uh, of uh, Louisa Baker his book of Heaven. So Jesus tells her that yes, suffering will come, but how you face it, how you handle it, is the essence. So if you are able to say in all your suffering, with tears rolling down your eyes, you are going to say that yes, Lord, it is very painful very painful for me. You know it. But I thank you because I know that you are love. And whatever you do is out of love. You can never act anything in any way out of, uh, beyond love, out of anger. So whenever chastisement comes to us, remember what we had uh, learned in the previous sessions, earlier sessions. So chastisements come because of our sins. So uh, uh, Francis Hogan beautifully puts it that uh, all that we do, our, our good deeds, our sacrifices, our prayers, our mortifications, the masses we attend, the rosaries we say, all that, everything goes up. And all our, our anger, our hatred, our, our fights, our, our evil thoughts, everything goes up. And what can go up to heaven is everything that is holy. Nothing unholy can enter heaven. Right, we read that in the book of Hebrews. So, what happens to those which go up? Uh, our hatred, uh, our jealousy, our vengeance. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, so, whatever, whatever cannot enter, whatever is unholy, which cannot enter. Uh, Francis Hogan says very nicely that there is a post office up there in heaven, and these things which cannot enter are stamped, saying. You know, return to the sender. <laughs> so those are the chastisements. So whatever whatever happens to us, whatever comes to us, when we hear about the, the, the train tragedy in Odisha, when we hear, so he told that time there was a tower of Siloam which fell on and some people died. Do you think they were worse sinners than you? No. It is a caution for you to repent, to come back to God, look into yourselves and see where have I gone wrong? What have I failed? Jesus, Jesus, indict me. Show me the show me the wrong I have done. I repent of all my sins. Bless them, bless their souls, bless their families, and help me to, to be a repentant soul so that you can pay. And to be a repentant soul, the basic thing is nothingness. So it is only in nothingness that God can act because He created all earth and heaven all the stars, the billions and billions of stars, the galaxies, and we spoke of uh, the speck of a speck of a speck, remember? So, he has created everything out of nothingness just by his creative word. So, he is waiting for our nothingness. The moment we fill our souls with our pride, our anxieties, our worries, our fears, then 
he has no place. So I was just, uh, I came across one thing which is interesting. That is, there is a, 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 a painter and uh, Francis Hogan refers to her. It is uh, known as, uh, it is there in the net. It is called Radiant Light, Radiant Light dot org. So I went to that website. Now this is by a painter known as Elizabeth uh, Wang. Elizabeth Wang, W-A-N-G. Elizabeth Wang was a, 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 another denominational Christian. She became a Catholic and then she was a good artist, a painter. And she has painted some thousands of paintings about various attributes, about, uh, say about mortification, about virtues. And there she says that she has a beautiful painting about a good soul receiving communion. When the soul is well prepared, after making confession, it is free from sin. And that soul, when it re receives Holy Communion, the sort of the joy which G Jesus has in going there, that painting is also there. Then there is another soul which has received communion without sufficient preparation. And what happens to that soul, that is also a painting there. So you can go. Excuse me. So you can go to uh, read. Uh, radiantlight.org and see those beautiful paintings. So there she has drawn a painting of a soul which is receiving Jesus without adequate preparation. So there Jesus is unable to enter because that, that soul is full of pride, full of anger, full of worldly things. So Jesus has to wait outside. He's not able to enter. He feels suffocated. So that is the sort of thing which has been uh, depicted in a drawing. But that is the sort of thing which Jesus is facing whenever we receive him without adequate preparation. Today happens to be uh, the feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Jesus. So the uh, father was mentioning this, the importance, the importance of receiving him with proper preparation, which sometimes even devout Catholics forget. And uh, many, many of us just go. And he was, he was mentioning how, how he sees people coming to receive communion. The way we come, some just extend, extend one hand, some just open one mouth, bend down and then put out their tongue. So it's so very difficult to understand what people are trying to, how they receive communion. And this is just the external. And what state they are inside. God only knows. So this is something which uh, Jesus tells Louisa Baker that the soul which comes to me with love, anything done out of love for me pleases him immensely. So very often when we think that we love God, I often think, how, how do I love God? Just, just by saying a rosary, just by going for mass, is that enough? But Jesus tells Louisa Baker, it's just not enough. You have to have that deep love which I have. And in volume three, he says that I suffered all the passion more out of divine love than for the sins of all mankind. More out of divine love than for out of the anger, the hatred which the Jews had against me. So this divine love which he has is something which is profound, which is far beyond our understanding. We are finite. And his infinite love for us is beyond our understanding. So every time, every time we do something good to somebody, when we, when we uh, really say that, yes, Lord, and we take something which is very difficult to swallow, then we say, yes, Lord, you have allowed it. Thank you, Lord, I accept it. Yes, it is painful for me. As he says uh, to Luisa Picaretta. So if some food is bitter, you don't like it, then as you keep on chewing it, chewing it, saying that, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, it is bitter, but for your sake, I take it. It The, the bitterness becomes reduced. So the first time when you say, oh my, I don't want this. I hate this, this bitter God. I just hate it. I don't want to take it. But for your sake, when I keep taking it two times, three times, as I chew it, then it becomes acceptable. So that is the sort of thing we have to enter into. And Jesus shows how much, how much he's yearning for the souls of every one of us to receive him with love. 
as he often says that my love goes unreturned so people don't don't uh, realize that i need to be loved i show i shower upon them all my love my unfathomable love but very often i get and he shows uh, louisa baker at some visions of the body of christ how it is mutilated see what man is doing to me you know i'm hurt i'm wounded i'm bleeding and in one place in volume 3 jesus tells louis of ecrat i suffer more in the eucharist than i suffered in jerusalem right in the flesh in the eucharist i suffer more than i suffered in the days of my life right then i was going through the passion so this is something which we can need to understand from this book of heaven from the revelations to louis of ecrat so we often think that yes jesus has died he has risen we celebrate easter oh great joy jesus is there at the right hand yes his divinity is there at the right hand of the father but his humanity is still suffering so that is the reality we need to understand he's still suffering so suffering and it is for us to alleviate that and louisa pecoret is ready always she was she was shown in 1900 she was shown a vision of mutilated corpses dead bodies stinking you know and that was a vision of the uh, the first world war the second world war she was shown perhaps it is it is guessed that it was a picture of the atomic bombing of uh, hiroshima and nagasaki huge flame going up smoke going up bodies mutilated thrown about on the streets so this was something which uh, she could not understand she she saw it she was petrified she said why is this happening why don't you stop it is how can you allow your image and likeness you know we are we are created in his image and likeness how can you allow your image and likeness to suffer like this this is what she tells him this is one this is something which i could not prevent by my cross by my suffering the chastisement had to come because justice is an attribute as strong as equal as mercy we only think about god's mercy yeah divine mercy jesus came to st faustina and showed this picture of divine mercy as yes, god is all mercy fathomless mercy yes at the same time he is also the god of justice because he has this attribute as good as any his attribute of love his attribute of mercy his attribute of justice so we often forget that this mercy i told you about her friend in odisha who used to say uh, he was not very regular to church when i tell him why you're not coming regularly he'll say oh god is so merciful even at the 11th hour i can say oh sorry oh sorry jesus he will take me to heaven so that was that was the total dependence on god's mercy in that gentleman but then we forget we often forget that we add to his problem we add to his pain and suffering whenever we don't join him as co-redeemers because he wants us to be co-redeemers but we only want what as as uh, self fish people we always so he tells louis of pecoret so man is so stingy so selfish he only wants everything he doesn't want to share my pain so that is something we have to uh, understand and uh, luisa pecoretta has shown how she is taken to a garden in a vision and that is uh, symbolic of the church and there she sees the hierarchy of the church the, the bishops the archbishops the cardinals they are all sinning and that is shown to luisa pecoretta and this was this was a, a prophecy so she was she was shown this what is going to come this was sometime sometime in 1899 she was shown. and jesus was telling her this is this is coming in the years to come so mm-hmm. this jesus himself descri- described yes so yeah in fact uh, on this what you said of, about the suffering being part of uh, you know god's jesus is suffering Uh, you know one of the things which uh, i just uh, you know adding to what jude, jude is saying he's saying that only if you knew the value of the suffering and eh, mm. the process of suffering 
Jesus is saying they would compete with one another to suffer more. Mm, yes. Because um, this uh, means, uh, uh, you know, in heaven has got different places, uh, more glorious and less glorious places. And it will be distributed according to the sufferings that is suffered down here on the earth. And if only uh, they, they knew the preciousness of suffering, they would compete with one another to suffer more. But this science is not recognized by the world. And so they abhor all that they can make them richer for eternity. Mm, yes. Yeah. In fact, yeah, uh, I've I, read about some of the same. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, this, carry on, carry on. The, 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 the suffering uh, has two elements. One is uh, you glorifying God. Second, second is you uh, being part of uh, part of the you know Christ's redemption process. So these two things uh, you know come together when we uh, take the cross. And Jesus uh, take asking us to take the cross does not mean that you know you just take the cross and you walk in your own way. No, you are one is that you are uh, you know securing a deeper place in heaven. Uh, this is, that is your hard work. Your hard work uh, is not, nothing but you. how well you take up your cross. That is the first thing. The second thing is that Jesus took up the cross and you are becoming co, uh, you know, I would know, I don't know that's the right word to use, co-redeemer, but yes, we yeah. are yeah, co-redeemer with Christ. So this understanding, uh, if we have, we can really, it can really change uh, the way we look at That is where the divine will is. You resign into the divine will. You know, the moment we, it goes again, most of our sufferings, I tell you, more than the sickness and our, our financial, uh, you know, the crisis or any material loss, the biggest suffering that comes in our life is in our mind. You know, our ego broken. You know, it, your ego being broken. Our things goes against our plan, against our will. You know, we plan something and suddenly, you know, things will change and everything goes haywire. But we don't see that as a suffering. We see it as a, you know, it is going against my plan. But if you really resign into God's will there, the divine will there, you, we are actually, you know, uh, you know, going far above, far above the worldly standard. I think that is some understanding we should have, you know. So I just wanted to share, uh, Jude, just adding yes, this. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I, I remember reading about uh, some of the saints. It was, I think, Saint. Uh, 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 Montfort, Louis, Louis Grigon de Montfort. So he says that um, if you go to heaven and see the levels, the levels are there. And if you have an idea of it, you will come back and say, oh my goodness, I want to go to the next level. I'm ready to suffer anything to go to the just next higher level. If you are shown, today if I am taken to heaven and shown, dude, you are here and you can go up to the next level, even up to the higher level, another higher level. And for that, you just have to accept everything which comes to you and say that, thank you, Jesus. Instead of saying, oh my, how can I face it? Oh my God, tomorrow I have to return this. I have, how do I do it? So if you have this sort of attitude, you're going deeper and deeper down. But yeah. if you say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, I give this to you. You have allowed it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Then you have that coming from your heart and not just from your heart. When you have that coming from your heart, you will be rising higher. Yeah. So in fact, uh, just, to give you, uh, just to give you an example today, you know, today morning uh, when we went for Mass, uh, apparently we both uh, sat, Sharu and I uh, sat in two different benches because, you know, some confusion happened. And so I was uh, asking her to come and I, I like, uh, you know, the whole family to sit together when we go for Sunday mass. <laughs> um, and I was, uh, you know, I was getting a little disturbed about, about that. And I was, uh, you know, looking at her and she said, no, I will sit here because she didn't want to come and, you know, uh, sit there because people were there. As I was getting, you know, started to getting upset about it in my heart, suddenly I remembered, if that is God's will, that is God's will, let it be. And for me, this was burning. Yeah. Because, and later she came and sat, uh, you know, uh, she could uh, find a way to come and sit. Coming, sitting is not uh, as important for me as my attitude change that submitting to God's will. So this kind of opportunities we get every day in plenty in our lives. And this is what I remember, Jude, uh, you know, you telling in one of your talks, a couple of, couple of times you said, you know, let it be, let his will be, you know, that fiat. 
so you know those are what going to build us up you know um uh, the, you know it is you don't need to wait for a big uh, you know event to happen in our life and say that lord let your will be done you and i may not be able to say that in a big event if you don't practice these small uh, you know changes that happens uh, in our daily life so this is an emphasis i strongly feel that we need to have uh, in this uh, approach in our walk uh, in the divine will to uh, submit ourselves to resign uh, ourselves to the divine will in the small events of our uh, daily life exactly exactly you know and i have been trying to practice it and as i said yesterday i can feel the grace coming to me because earlier uh, in my younger days if something bad happens to me i used to be pondering over it kind of cursing myself cursing the person who caused it cursing my bosses and all all sorts of things and of course going for mass receiving communion all, all that making confession all that but now the the coming back to him is much faster so the moment uh, anything uh, you know i start thinking about something which happened to me a few years back and those those uh, thoughts keep keep coming back to me and they start playing as if it happened just yesterday then i get into it for some time in a few minutes i'm able to get back oh sorry sorry lord sorry oh no no i i surrender it to you. i surrender it to you sorry lord sorry mother mary help me help me help me help me take me out of this i surrender it to you bless him bless him bless them bless them more than you bless me this this is something uh, which uh, i have tried to practice and uh, i keep getting you know uh, getting uh, 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 criticized for this even from my own family members they say oh, what's going wrong with you huh? <laughs> for everything bad happening to you say oh yes bless him bless him and all that you have to be practical that is what my wife tells me huh? you can't you know, take jesus for everything i said i can i'm not taking jesus jesus is with me always that is all <laughs> i'm not bringing him in you know, she'll say why are you bringing him in you have to do something huh? so i said i am not bringing him in he is always there <laughs> so i just have to say that yes what he wants me to say because he has done so much for me oh no enough 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 don't start your your, your lectures here <laughs> so, so that is how it goes on in my own time so it it is uh, it's very difficult and at one point jesus tells luisa picareta in volume 3 that uh, you have to trust me beyond reason uh, that is something which struck me like a lightning which struck yesterday uh, you have to trust me beyond reason yes i i have gone through i, I am going through certain uh, you know trials where i have to trust him beyond reason things happen which uh, nobody can accept that how could this be what what is going on even my children say oh, no, 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 stop this stop this please no don't do to allow this to happen so if he has allowed it capital h if he has allowed it it is for my good and that is where our trust has to come beyond reason just imagine and i take the example of mother mary just as i uh, i shared just now with uh, the jews so just imagine a young uh, girl of uh, jerusalem of uh, nazareth yeah she suddenly sees an angel coming from heaven and telling her you become pregnant and hey, you will deliver a boy she says how can this be i am a virgin but then when she knows that the power of the most high will overshadow you and the holy spirit will come upon you and the one to be born is will be holy that moment no thought of oh, what will happen if the neighbors come to know i will be stoned to death no this sort of feeling never entered her that is because she had that confidence fiat she said just imagine huh? a young girl in her teens saying fiat to something which is just not acceptable in society and that is why saint elizabeth told her when she blessed are you who believed that what was told you would come to pass right because she has seen her husband suffering becoming dumb because he questioned gabriel right so she says that blessed are you because you believed that what was told you would come to pass so that is the thing whatever has happened yes lord you have allowed it you are in control that sort of trust in him. and that is what uh, brother jose was sharing you know so that 
confidence in love. That confidence is what we have to get. And I seek Mother Mary's help in this. Please, Mother Mary, give me your confidence. Give me your heart. You know, in that consecration to Mother Mary, you know, the 33 days to morning glory, I have been doing that. That, yes, ask for her heart. So I ask for her heart every morning. Mother Mary, take, take my heart, my weak heart, my poor heart, my, my fearing heart, my worrying heart. You take it and give me your heart with, with all the confidence you have. Uh, as a young girl in Jerusalem, with all the, the threats of someone who would be stoned to death for such a thing, you said, fiat, let your will be done. God's will be done. Huh? And Mary said, yes, that song I love very much. And Mary said, yes. And Mary said, yes, when she knew that it was the will of God. So that is something, you know, is... We have to learn from believer. And here in volume three, yes, uh, before I, yeah, there is still time. So before I, I forget, you know, Jesus is taking Luisa Picaretta to uh, purgatory to show the king of Italy who had died without enough preparation, right? Mother Mary comes. She asks Luisa, do you want to go with me to purgatory? Luisa says, yes. You know, the king of Italy is suffering. He needs some. Intercessors, will, will you will you intercede for him? She says, "Yeah, fiat, fiat, your will be done, God's will be done." She goes there, and she sees the suffering. She, Mother Mary shows her; she's he's tormented, you know? and Jesus tells her, "He's made to die as many deaths as he led people away from God." So the suffering. He has to face is as many deaths for the number of people he led away from God because of his leadership. So we are responsible. And she, she intercedes for him, takes the pain of, of, uh, of that king of Italy. And she sees him relieved a little, not fully relieved, because he has to suffer so many deaths for all the people who had been led astray because of his leadership. So we have to be very careful about, about what we say, about the example we set. As I read somewhere that, be very careful about what you say or what you do. Because you may be the only Bible somebody reads, right? Just imagine. People say, oh, yes, you are. You, you are a Christian. Huh? And I have heard people saying, oh, oh, he's a Christian, he won't tell a lie. Hmm? That's wonderful. So that that is the sort of image which we have. We may not realize that. And Jesus is telling exactly that to Luis of Icaret. See, that king of Italy died without preparation. And he has to suffer as many deaths as the number of people he had led astray. Just imagine. And that is really, really bad. That suffering in purgatory is a, is a totally different chapter. We can talk about it for three or four sessions. So this suffering is what we are bringing upon ourselves. And the choices before us, just as uh, Brother Joe pointed out very nicely, we have the choice before us to choose life every time, choose life. But every time we go with the way of the world, say, oh, oh, what, will, what will my boss think of me? What will my neighbors think of me? What will my family think of me? No, no, I can't do this. Yes, yes, I know it is, it is not okay, but uh, what is what to do? That is the way of the world. So when we compromise, we compromise and say no to God, we choose, we choose death. And that that death is so painful. We just don't imagine how much painful it is. And what amount of glory we lose by just saying no, standing firm. <laughs> Okay. Sorry. Okay. So that the glory which is available to us at, at every step, you no, know, we can choose and gain divine currency by saying, Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, this is painful for me, but I choose to do your will. Your will, your will be done, not my will. Just imagine that that scene in Gethsemane. And Jesus was, was shedding blood. And he tells Luisa Picaretta, you know, my closest friends had abandoned me. They were sleeping. 
Hmm? I had to wake them up three times. They were sleeping. And my father had a bad He said, there's no other way. You have to suffer and die. And then angels had to come and strengthen him. And he says, could you not keep watch with me for one hour? This is what he asks his closest apostles, Peter, James, and John. Could you not keep watch with me for one hour? So that, that is something which, which keeps ringing in mind. So whenever something very difficult happens, to me, I said, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. You have allowed it. You have allowed it. You went and to kneel with him, kneel down with him in Gethsemane and say, we gain divine courage. And here in volume uh, three, very beautifully, Jesus is having a conversation with Luis of Picaretta. Yeah? He asks, what is that which maintains the, the, the soul in communication with God? And Luisa Picaretta says that it is prayer. Jesus, yes. Jesus tells her, yes, that's right. Prayer keeps that link, that communication chain between God and the soul, right? And what is that which sustains it, which nourishes it? Then Luisa had no immediate answer. Then Jesus gives her some infused knowledge. A ray of light comes into her. Then she says, it is the internal pondering, the meditation of the word of God, of God's rays, of God's life, Jesus' life on earth. So when we keep on meditating upon God's word, when we think about how Jesus lived his life, early morning he used to get up, even if he had gone to bed very late, after curing hundreds of people, he must have been very tired, but he'll be the first to get up and go away. People will get up and see where has he gone. He'll have to search for him. He'll be communicating with his father quietly in a lonely place. So that is that is exactly what he wants us to do. So he wants us to be have that in that link with us. So long as we are united with him, we are strong. And the way to go to him, you now the passport we, do, we talked about yesterday, that passport which needs three signatures, remember? So what are those three signatures? One, one is? Humility, yeah. obedience. Uh, uh, humility, obedience. They are the second and third. First and even the yes. The signature. There are three signatures, yes. The passport uh, to attain, to attain the eternal beatitude. That is, to attain the glory of heaven on earth. So that, that you need a passport for that and that has to be signed by your resignation. The first thing is your resignation. That is something which we have to practice and practice very, very hard. So that resignation, you know, when anything bad happens to us, you know, when something good happens to us, oh, when we, we have achieved something which we wanted, we have been working hard for it, we are full of joy. We thank God, oh Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah, thank you Jesus. But then, and it doesn't go away. Oh my God, why is it happening to me? You know, that when when that is not there, when we say, Yes, Lord, it is painful, it is it is very, very painful. But then you have allowed it not to that resignation. When we when we tell him that yes, Lord, because you have allowed it, I accept it. Resignation. Yes. And the second one, the resignation after the resignation comes comes the humility. Humility, yes. Thank you, thank you, brother Francis. Yes, humility. So humility is something which we have to we have to practice. You know? Very often, very often, uh, humility is very difficult to come by. You know? Our ego is so very strong. You know? uh, why should I do it? What does he think of me? You know? These are things which come to our mind very often. You know? And uh, uh, there are people who can speak on behalf of the evil one. <laughs> How could you do this? Oh, you, it's not its not your job. And you say, oh, yes, yes. Why should I do it? You know? so, so we have to be careful. So that humility. And uh, in an earlier volume, I think in the second volume, uh, Francis Hogan gives an example of a book uh, where there are uh, the book called uh, uh, 13 uh, Levels of Humility, 13 Levels of Humility or 13 Practices of Humility. She says that she started reading that book and she went to the third third level. She couldn't go beyond it. She stopped reading. She couldn't go. <laughs> so that is the, the difficulty of practicing humility. Yes. And uh, I have been trying to practice that because 
what touched me was what St. Louis, uh, Therese of Lisieux said. Even if you pick up a pin from the floor and put it on the table, by saying that it is for your will, for doing your holy will, Lord, I unite it with your divine will. When you say that and unite it with his cross and put it on the table, that little thing, that innocuous thing, has immense value. Uh, and Jesus says that it's much bigger than many, many uh, prayer efforts, projects of holiness. You know? So this is something which I have been trying to practice. So whenever I find something on the floor, I just pick it up and put it on the floor. Jesus, for love of you. Uh, then I stay on the fourth floor. Uh, and uh, when I go to the lift, if it is on the ground floor, I say, you want me to walk, Lord? Your will be done. I start walking on the, uh, taking the stairs. You know? So <laughs> when I find I'm late, when I, oh, yeah, fourth floor. The lift is on the fourth floor. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, you want me to take the lift. Thank you, Jesus. I take the lift because I'm, I don't have time to take the stairs. So this, this sort of practice at every, every moment, at every turn. And when we are leaving, and I, I tell, tell Jesus, come on. I heard it from... Uh, uh, who was that uh, sister, Kamalite sister? Hmm? Uh, she, she said that she said, when you when you do anything, you invite Jesus. Hmm? So you say when you are going to you know, drive, you tell Jesus come and drive my car. You drive my car. Mother Mary, come with all your angels. Be with me on my way. So this sort of thing, you know, when you practice, you know, you know uh, it gives you gives you a lot of lot of strength. It's a lot of a lot of uh, joy. Uh, and um, and that is something uh, I've been trying to practice for the, for the last few uh, few months, and I, it has now come into me as a sort of a second nature, and that is that is something I love. So before starting, I just say, "Jesus, come drive my car," as I take the car keys, and Mother Mary, please come with all with all the angels. Yeah, my guardian angel go before me. Huh? So this is this is the sort of thing we have to invite invite Jesus into everything. So when we keep inviting him. Yeah, when we bring his cross into everything, as uh, St. Paul said that, uh, I wanted to speak to, to come to you only with the cross of Jesus, with, with Jesus and him crucified. Brother Joseph very nicely brought out that scripture. Yes. So I did not come with all my learning as a, as a Pharisee. You know? you know, Pharisees were very, very proud people, arrogant people. They knew the scriptures. They knew the word of God. So they were he was trained by one of the best best teachers, Gamaliel. He's a student of Gamaliel, and he was one of the best Pharisees. But he says that after this encounter with Jesus, he says that I wanted to talk about nothing when I came to you. I wanted to talk only about Jesus and Him crucified. So this is something I feel we have lost over the centuries. You know, in the early centuries, the, the Christians were able to face all the persecutions. Because they were able to unite themselves to the cross of Jesus. And this is something, we have the cross of Jesus in our altars, you know, in our churches, in our homes, yes, fine. But then, the significance of the cross, the meaning of the cross is lost. We find that, yes, whenever there is a trouble, we say, okay, we run to, we run to Mother Mary, say, please, please take this away, please take this away. Uh, uh, this, we want to get. So, Jesus tells Louisa Pekaret, True love yearns to give. So if you are in love, you like to give gifts. Hmm? You, want to, you keep on thinking, what can I give? Uh, what can I give him? Oh, he likes this one. Oh, he likes this chocolate. I like, I'll take it for him. Now, this sort of thing, that thinking we have to have, how can I please God? So when if any difficulty comes, you will have to grab it as an opportunity. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I offer it to you. Yes, it is very difficult for me. But because you have taken much more difficulties for my sake, I take it for your sake. I become a co-redeemer. The problem with us is that we are very happy to be co-heirs because Jesus has won heaven for us. Yes, he has made us co-heirs. We want to be co-heirs because we can be the king and we want to go along with him in glory. But when it comes to something, when it comes to alleviating Saving souls on his behalf, working with him, gathering with him, bringing more and more people into his marvelous light. We, we shrink. Oh, no, not me. Oh, why should this happen to me? Not me. That sort of attitude we have. And that is what Jesus tells Louisa Picard. So this is something which 
people are not able to take. So he tells, you know, I was in the Garden of Gethsemane. I was looking for someone who would who would comfort me, who would console me, who would stand in the breach. There was none. So he wants each and every one of us, whatever little little pain, whatever little problem. Uh, when my when my daughter tells her son to go and have her wedding ticket, we need some curd immediately. Go go get it from the shop downstairs. You know, why don't you just send my sister? He say. Then I start quietly moving. Oh, you see, grandpa's going, and then he will start running. So the, this sort of thing, you know, it's difficult, you know, and this small things, the small things. So when we keep practicing the small things, we start going higher. Just as the saint who was taken to heaven and shown. And he regrets, oh my goodness, I want to get to the next, just next level. And I'm ready to face any privation, any mortification. See, So these mortifications, small mortifications, if we are able to practice, it brings us great, greater, great glory. And we give great glory to God. We satisfy this. So he says, Jesus tells her that when, she was, when he was away for, from Louisa Pickerett, he was telling Louisa Pickerett, okay, you are getting angry. Now you think that because of your, your weakness, your sinfulness, I'm not coming to you. You're wrong. See, my love for you is eternal. In Jeremiah 31, 3. My love for you is eternal. It will never fail. It will never change. So I had to go away from you because if I tell you about the mortifications, which people, the chastisements which I had to bring upon the people, you will try to stop me. And Louisa tells him exactly that. Why didn't you tell me? I am ready to take it. He said, no, this is something which is beyond you. And he shows her. Now, there was a meteorite which struck in the early uh, 20th century, early 1900s or so. So that time, a meteorite which was about to strike the earth because of Jesus' intercession, he took upon himself to see that it falls in an uninhabited, I mean, where people are not staying, uninhabited place in Siberia. So it caused no deaths of people. It only fell in the snow in Siberia. It did not cause any damage to people. So that is the sort of love he has for us. And that is something which, which we need to understand. So uh, Francis Hogan very often repeats that if you can condense the entire entire 36 volumes of uh, the Book of Heaven written by Louisa Pecoretta, there are only two things. It is love and divine will. So every time we say that, yes, Lord, your will be done. Your will be done. Your will, not my will, but your will be done. We are giving him glory. We are adding, we are joining him as co-redeemers. So and that is something which he is looking for in it. So, and he says that the more you grow in it, you know, this is a process. It takes time. And the spirituality, as he says, is a journey towards someone. And you have to become, not only reach him, but become like him. You have to become another Christ. You have to be in him, with him, through him. You can only go to him through him. So for that, at every step, whatever little thing comes to us, which, which is unpalatable, which is painful, which is shocking. Just have to say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, your will be done, your will be done. And we keep practicing this fiat, fiat, your will be done, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, it is very harsh, it is very difficult, it is very humiliating, yes, Lord, but you have allowed it. Thank you, Lord. And we add to, we gain, we gain divine currency, divine currency, and we add, add to his glory. Because that is that is what he wants us to do. He wants he wants to reside in that soul. And that, like those paintings which you uh, referred to by Elizabeth Wang, Radiant Light dot org. So there you find those beautiful paintings by that lady. So the 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 soul which is receiving communion in a well prepared state. Jesus is very happy. He has enough space. He's he's accommodated there in glory. But in a soul which is not prepared. Jesus has no place because there is so much of envy, so much of hatred, so much of, of ill feelings. So he's, he has no place. He just has to wait outside. So that is the sort of thing we, we, don't, we don't realize. We have to always say that, yes, Lord, 
Yes, Lord, prepare me, prepare me, prepare you. I want to do this. Yes, that do this, your, your purgatory here on earth, it is much easier. Yes. And doing this purgatory here on earth is the greatest, greatest problem for us. So very little things we often say, no. Right? So this practicing this, you know, at one stage, Jesus, uh, you know, when uh, three people come to Louisa Bicarate, uh, and uh, Louisa Bicarate doesn't understand at the moment. And uh, she is asked to repent of her sins. And she says, the confiteor, that is the, I confess. And after she says that, the three people bless her and says that your sins are forgiven. And it is later that she comes to know that it was the Trinity, the three persons of the Blessed Trinity who came to her and who blessed her after she made her confession. So this uh, confession, this is something which, which we have to understand. The more we are ready to make a confession for the little things which we have forgotten, keep them, keep them written down or at least remember them. Get them cleansed. The more we do that, the closer we come. And he is able to come to us in a much bigger way. And he is able to lift us up to greater, greater heights so that he can he can do his will through us. So I think uh, with that. We will stop here we, and uh, welcome any any questions, any any clarifications, any doubts. Okay. <clears throat> there are a lot of references, Bible references which, which uh, Francis Hogan gives. Uh, I didn't want to go into them and uh, uh, you know lengthen my uh, talk, but I think I'll do that the next time, the next uh, weekend. Uh, this time, I just wanted to share some share some of these thoughts which uh, Luisa Pickett has brought to us, and uh, this is something which uh, we need to we need to uh, uh, seek, surrender to Him, and say that yes, Lord, Your way, Your way, not my way, I'm not not Your way, not my not my will, but Your will be done, Your will be done. So that is the confidence which, which, which is built up in us when we say that, yes, Lord. Because we, when we trust him beyond, beyond all reason, beyond all human understanding, when we trust him and say that whatever happens, yes, Lord, you are in control. I thank you. I trust it. So that is the sort of trust he's looking for us. In the, in the divine mercy picture, we see that Jesus, I trust in you. What revealed to St. Faustina. When we Trust him totally. Whatever happens, he is in control. Just imagine you know, Abraham when he was asked to sacrifice his son. That son, you know, I, I often wonder, had it been me, I would have said, what is this, Lord? You gave me a son at, at a ripe old age of 99, and now you are asking, why did you give him at all? You, you could have kept him without giving. That, that would be the human way of, of thinking. And just imagine the same Abraham he fought tooth and nail for Sodom and Gomorrah. He started with 50. If there are 50 good people, would you spare? If, if, if there is just five shots, no? 45, I said, okay. When he comes right down to 10, <laughs> went on arguing, one after the other. But when it came to the sacrificing his son, not a word he said. Just said yes. He just said. And just imagine, the son is asking, hmm, Father, we, we have we have the fire, uh, we have the wood, but where is the sacrificial lamb? Just imagine, a uh, father would have broken down. Oh, my son, you, you are the you are the sacrificial lamb. I, I just put myself in Abraham's place sometimes and say, oh, I would have just broken down and said, Oh, my son, it is you who are going to be sacrificed. He said, Jehovah Jaira. Hmm? Lord will provide. That place is called Jehovah Jireh even today. And I love that. that, that I keep saying when I, when I face any difficulties and financial problems, I say, Jehovah Jireh. You are my provider, Lord. You will provide. Jehovah Jireh. That's a, that's a, a powerful mantra. You know, I keep practicing it. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. And I find that how am I going to make that payment? I don't have them. 
Jehovah Jireh, you are, you are my provider, Lord. You keep on providing me. I know that you're going to provide me this time also. Thank you, Lord. And he provides. <laughs> that is the beauty. Because he is a promise keeper. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. That is who you are. Thank you. Okay. Questions? So we will we will close it today. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any so, no, no questions? Come back. Uh, so tomorrow we are going to have uh, the session by Raghu. Uh, five days, and then we'll come back to Divine Will. Uh, weekend, weekend, the Divine Will. We have the Divine Will weekend every time. Yeah, 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 the annual weekend. And just remember, reflect uh, reflect on these things what we heard today. Uh, you know, asking Lord uh, to give the grace. The grace is given. Uh, you respond to that grace by taking a decision that I want to. Three emph emphasis is that one is about our prayer. You know, today, one of the words which uh, Jude has already shared, you know, the reflections that I got is that constantly be praying and with thanksgiving. So this is the way which we can keep the divine will happening in our lives, constantly praying, constantly praying. So this ejaculatory prayer is something which is very important that will help in us, help us in doing it. You cannot sit and pray 24 hours, but this ejaculatory prayer, if you build a habit, uh, ask the Lord, which is the prayer that he would like you to, you know, constantly keep saying, ask the Lord and he will tell you, he has told me something, okay, uh, but he will tell you also. And I, um, you know, and I'm very happy to say that prayer. It's a small prayer, uh, which I won't want to share with you. Uh, but you ask him, uh, you know, what is that he wanted to tell you? He wanted you to pray every day, every time, uh, other than your, uh, you know, main prayers. That way, that way you will grow in the divine world. Okay, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a beautiful day. And uh, see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye. God bless you. Thank you. Bye-bye. God bless you. God bless you. Bye.